Hello, everyone. Welcome to this session on deploying an end-to-end -end website on AWS. Today in this session, I will be taking you through how you can basically deploy a website, which will be also interacting with databases and a service called S3 on AWS. Okay. So without any further ado, guys, let's go ahead and get started with the session. So let me first tell you what we are basically going to deploy today. So guys, uh, we are basically going to set up something like this today. So we as a user, we will try to go to a URL like this, www.awsproject.tk. And this domain should basically route us to our website. Okay, now what will our website be able to do? Let me quickly show you, right? So I have a website on my local host, right? So let me see if I can show you that website. So one second, let me go ahead. And launch this website once. Okay. Now, in order to launch this website, what I'll have to do is I will have to install some packages. So let me go ahead and install them. Uh, so I will have to install uh, PyMySQL. Let me see if this makes it running. And OK, so. What we have to do is we have to deploy this website and the way the we are going to architect our website is going to be something like this. OK, so first of all, we will configure this domain to connect to our virtual server that we are going to launch. Right. And the way to do that would be using the route 53 service on AWS. OK, now our website will be able to upload objects onto Amazon RDA, uh, sorry, onto a uh, you know a storage service called s3 right so our website whatever images that we are going to upload using our website it will be uploaded to uh, you know an object store called s3 from where uh, you will also be able to see that the objects are getting uploaded and at the same time the entry for this will also be stored inside a mysql database which is going to be inside amazon rds OK, so guys, this is what uh, we are going to deploy today and we are going to go ahead step by step. So first, let's go ahead and start by setting up our website. So first, let's, uh, you know, deploy a database, a MySQL database on AWS. Now, the way to do that is by making use of a service called Amazon RDS. Right. So let me first go ahead and switch to my AWS management console. OK, so guys, this is what my AWS management console looks like. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on EC2. Uh, sorry, so we are going to deploy our database first. So let me go ahead and select RDS. OK, so you just have to type in RDS over here and it will basically make you go to the RDS service. Now, once you are over here, this is how the RDS dashboard looks like. Once you are over here, you will have to click on something called as create database. Just click over here. And now what you will have to do is you will have to click on. Uh, uh, so this is standard create. This is uh, going to be automatically selected for you in the engine options. You will have to select MySQL. So let's select that. And now with MySQL selected, just scroll down and you can select the MySQL version. OK, now you can select any version that you want. I'm going to leave it at default, which is 8.0 and scroll down to select the template in which we want to deploy. Right now, since we are practicing uh, on our AWS account, what I recommend is for you to basically deploy everything in the free tier. So just select free tier over here. Right, and then scroll down. And once you have reached here, what you'll have to do is you will have to go ahead and specify your 
database uh, how will you basically identify this database server okay so let's say we give this name to be employee database because our website is basically going to be an employee website uh, about how we can basically upload data of an employee onto uh, you know our website this will be about that so let's name our database also employee right and now let's go ahead and specify the uh, username and the password okay so let me specify the username as in telepart and let me specify a password as well so let me go ahead and specify the password okay so i've given a password and now what i can do is i i don't have to choose this because uh, this is basically which kind of machine do you want to launch so the machine that we want to launch is going to be t2.micro itself so we are not going to touch this right uh, because this falls under the free tier and this is automatically selected for me when I choose the template as free tier uh, above. Okay, now uh, the next thing that I might have to see is auto scaling. So, auto scaling basically means if you get a lot of uh, load on your website, should your server become uh, two or three instead of just one? So, we do not require that as of now. And I think it is a little advanced for you as well for this class. So, we are not going to select this option. Okay, uh, then which network do you want to deploy it in? So we are basically going to deploy it in the default network for now. So we are not going to touch this. And it is going to be a password authentication, uh, which is which is fine for us. Uh, is it publicly accessible? So yes, it will be publicly accessible, which means it will be available on the internet for us to work with. Okay, so we have selected yes over here and next we will have to change nothing else we can just now click on create database and my mysql is now basically getting automatically created now if you would have noticed if you were to do this on your own and uh, by that what i mean is if you were to not use any cloud provider and if you were to deploy a database server, you would have to do a lot of things. So first of all, you would have to launch a server. Then you would have to install MySQL manually on it, right? And then configure it to basically uh, allow internet connections from outside. But that is not something that you have done for now, right? What you have done is you have just gone through a dashboard where you have selected the right options and then you have just clicked on create database. Now, whatever is going to happen now is automatically going to be managed by aws and that is why uh, this service the service which you are using which is amazon rds is a managed database service which basically means everything from deployment everything from installation of the database everything is taken care of by aws and we don't have to do anything in it okay so now this is getting set up so let's wait for some time and make, let's let's hope this gets set up soon uh, if we come back to our slides uh, what we need to next figure out is our s3 bucket where our data is going to be uploaded and now what we are going to do is we are basically going to uh, you know create a bucket for us where all our data will be uploaded so coming back to my aws management console what i can do is i can just search for the s3 service over here Click on it, and now I will be taken to a S3 management console. Okay, now on the S3 management console, what I'll be doing is I'll be creating a bucket. So let's create a bucket and let's call it. Uh, uh, let's call it employee. Let's call it add employee. Okay, and this will be in the Ohio region, US East two, which is great, right? Nothing else we are changing, we are just clicking on create bucket. Now it's very important to take note of where your bucket is being deployed. So our bucket has been deployed in the Ohio region. And if you talk about our RDS, that will also be deployed in the Ohio region itself. So we can check that quickly. If you go to RDS again, how can you check which region you have basically deployed a resource in. Uh, you can check it in the URL. It says US East 2 
or what you can also do is you can just check the region over here at this section of your AWS console. It says Ohio over here as well. All right, great. So now we have created a bucket. We have created a database, right? And now what is left is to deploy our server, which is going to hold our website basically. Okay, so let's uh, create a server as well. So let me type in AC2 over here, click over it. And let's click on running instances. So here, what I'll be doing is I will be creating a server. And the way I'll be creating it is I'll be creating launch instance. And what I want to do is I want to basically deploy an Ubuntu server. So I'll be selecting Ubuntu over here. Right now in Ubuntu, uh, what is the processor that I want to choose for my server? It will always be free tier eligible. So I'm going to choose that. Click on next. Uh, then uh, how many instances do we want to launch? We just want to launch one instance because I want to show you how we can set up a website. Okay, so we're not going to change anything over here. And rest everything also you will not change anything. Just click on next. Uh, this is how much hard drive will be given to your system. So we will leave it at default will be 8 GB. We'll click on next. Uh, now let's click on configure security groups. Now here you will have to select the default security group. It should already be there when you first create your account. Just select this and click on review and launch. Okay. Now you can review all the settings that you want to, uh, to basically check. And if everything looks good, just click on launch. And over here you can either create a new key pair or you can choose an already existing one. So um, how to create a key pair, how to do, uh, how to convert it, how to set the right permissions, everything has been talked to you in the previous session, which was at 5.30. So that was deploying virtual servers on AWS, right? You can just refer that as well to see how you can do it. Over here, I'm going to use, uh, you know, a key pair which I've already defined, which is basically going to be uh, Mac Ohio. Okay, so I'm going to select this key pair, acknowledge that I have it, and click on launch instances. So now my EC2 is getting launched, so it will take some time. Meanwhile, let me see if you have any questions. Uh, so Prashant is saying you have shown the example of deploying a website. Is it possible to deploy components and compile my process in cloud itself? So Prashant, I think what you mean by this is deploying microservices in cloud. So yes, Prashant, that is possible uh, to deploy too, right? Uh, the way to do that, okay, there are multiple ways you can do that. I mean, if you if you're deploying a microservice, I don't think you should deploy it on one server. There are a lot of other services in AWS as well which you can make use of. For example, you have something called as Elastic Container Service. So if you are a little more advanced in AWS and understand the services, you can actually deploy it over there as too. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I have just launched uh, you know, my instance and let's check the status for this instance. So first of all, let me name this instance something. So let me put it as Heyman-Project. OK, so my instance is now uh, in the running state, which basically means it is all good. I can just uh, refresh. And now we can try connecting to our machine. OK, so let's select the machine. Uh, let's select the IP address of this machine. And now let's try to connect to it. Now how you can connect to it, you can basically connect to it using a terminal. So what I'm going to make use of is my terminal over here. Okay. And let me go to the place where I have saved the key for this server. Right. So the command is ssh hyphen i dot slash mic hyphen ohio dot pem the username for my server is ubuntu and this is the ip address so now i'm connecting to my ec2 server it's going to ask me whether i trust this server so yes i do
and now it will allow me to connect to the server. Great. So I've connected to the server. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, you know connect to my RDS first to see if everything is uh, working fine or not from the network point of view. Okay. So how can we connect to our RDS? First, we need to deploy a MySQL client on this machine, which will help us to connect to our RDS machine. So how can I install the MySQL client? So let me go ahead and update this machine first. So the command would be sudo apt get update it. This will update the machine. Okay, so machine got updated. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to install MySQL client. So sudo apt get install MySQL hyphen client. Okay, this is going to take a while to install. Meanwhile, I'll just take up questions. So Nagamani is saying how to do this with Windows. So Nagamani, if you want to SSH into an instance, uh, you will have to download a software called Putty, right? Uh, so I showed that in my previous session, uh, which was at 5.30. Uh, you can just refer that after this uh, session as to how to connect uh, from Windows to a server that you can connect to. Or you can just search online as to how to connect with a software called Putty to a Linux instance that you have deployed on AWS. Okay. So I hope that answers your question. All right. So now my SQL client has been installed on my machine, uh, on my AWS machine. And now what I'm go gonna do is I'm gonna try connecting to my RDS. Now for connecting, uh, since I've installed my SQL client, the command would be MySQL hyphen H, H being the host name of my database that I want to connect to. And for connecting to it, I will just go to my browser and go to the RDS service again. So what I need is the RDS URL. So let's go there. Okay. And now we can just select the database instance that we basically want to connect to. So I can just click on the database that I deployed earlier. And this is the URL that I'm looking for to connect to my instance. Okay, so I'll just select this. And let me see if any other information is required from my side. Okay, everything else looks good. So now what I'll do is I'll just Enter the URL over here. So MySQL hyphen H, the URL, then the username, which is in telepath, and then the password. So let me enter the password as well. And as you can see, I have successfully connected to my RDS and I am on the MySQL shell now. Okay. So before I move on, let me uh see if there are any other questions so nagamani is saying other than using putty for windows what are the other options linux machines uh from windows other than putty you can also use git bash uh, other than putty you also have something called a super putty which you can also it's a premium tool which you can also use to SSH into machines so Suresh is saying, can we configure this on Linux system instead of Ubuntu? So Suresh, uh, the commands that I'm writing right now are for Ubuntu. If you want to do it for Linux, I think you will have to Google the commands. So what I've done is I've
all right so now that i'm inside the mysql shell guys what i'm going to do is that uh, i will go ahead and see if the database is actually uh, initialized on this server so i'll just type in show databases and there's no database as of now deployed in this server so what i'll do is i'll type in the command create database employ so database is now created and now i will have to create a table inside employ where basically my uh, you know information is going to be stored okay now what all information do i need to store in this table that will be clear uh, from our website right so what we can do is uh, we can just check the code of our website and understand what all is required to enter uh, in our website so okay in our database so we need uh, a column called employee id first name last name uh, prime skills location and employ image file okay so these are the things that we need uh, to enter i think this is not required because this is the sql query and here i just have five things that i'm inserting in sql so what i'll do is i'll just select these five options and this is what i'm going to insert in my database so i can just go ahead i can create a table employ and now i can just specify the column so first column is uh, emp id let's give the data type to be as varchar and the value to be as 20. after emp id the next is first name so let's give f name over here and the value would be varchar 20. then we can give last name so last name again would be varchar 20 i'm just giving the default value as 20 characters you can modify it if you want uh primary skill so we'll give the primary skill to be varchar again and the range would be 20 characters too and then the location so this would be the last uh, column for our table and here also we'll give 20 characters okay it says no database selected so i'll just select use employ this will change our database and now i can just copy the same syntax okay it says i have an error so let me just check what the error is Okay, so I guess there are arrows which are causing the problem. So let me just copy it one by one. Employ then EMP ID with the comma. Then F name. Then last name. Then primary skills, which is this and then the location okay so my database is now created uh, successfully so if i type in show tables it's showing you that the employee table has been created great so now that my employee table has been created i can actually go ahead and start configuring my website to work okay meanwhile i'll just check if i have any questions okay no more questions let's go ahead so now what i'll be doing is i'll be configuring my code so let me just exit from mysql shell and let me exit from the ec2 server also okay so i'm back to my local and in my local let me go to the code uh, where basically i have my website 
Now, first, let's try to run the website on our local system, and then we will try to deploy it on the AWS Management Console. Okay, so uh, let me open it in Sublime Text, our code. There it is. And here, I will have to first configure my website. So here, I will be putting the uh, host name of RDS. So let me get that. Host name is nothing but the endpoint. So let me copy it. So this is the host name. Next thing that I'll be doing is I will be copying the username. So username is nothing but in telepath. Uh, then I'll be specifying the database. So uh, the database would be uh, employee. And the bucket name uh, is uh, EMP hyphen add if I'm not wrong. So let me just go ahead and verify that. Uh, the bucket name has to be the same as what you have created in S3 service. So it's called add employee. So let me specify the same in my code as well. So the bucket is called add employee, right? And then uh, we will be specifying the region. So region is US East. Hyphen two, okay. So guys, this is uh, you know the uh, configuration that we have to do. Now I also have to specify the password over here. So password would be in telepart one two three. And don't worry, I will be deleting this database later. So you guys can be rest assured that this is not going to be causing us a problem. Okay. So now what I can do is I can go back to my code and let's see if we can deploy this website on a local. Okay, so website is on on a local now, right? So let's see how the website looks like. So if I go to localhost, okay, so this is how my website is going to look like guys. Okay, and when I enter, the information over here it has to go and now be stored in my mysql database whatever information i'll be specifying over here that information will be going ahead and be stored in my database okay now uh, what i can also do over here is uh, now i will be making it available not on localhost but actually on my ec2 that is my web server so let's see how we can do that so first things first i will actually have to go ahead and close this application right and now let's uh, save everything so i will be pushing it to github so let me uh, stage everything on my local Comment it. Right, and now let's just go ahead and push it. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to create a remote repository. So let me go to GitHub.com. Now on GitHub.com, let me create a new repository, and let's call this repository as uh, AWS Hyphen Live. Okay, it will be a public repository. Let's click on Create. Okay, so repository has got created. Let me uh, add this in the origin. Added. And now let me push it to my website, uh, to my kit. All right, so my website has now been pushed onto GitHub, so I can verify that by refreshing over here and i can see that i have everything uploaded on this okay so let me check config.py as well yes so this, this also has all the values great now what i'll be doing is i will be going ahead 
and uh, uh, pulling this code on my EC2 server. So let's see how we can do that. So let me SSH into my EC2 again. Okay, so I'm inside my EC2 now. And let me clone the code that I have pushed onto my GitHub. Okay, so now I have uh, basically gone in, uh, I have copied the code onto my EC2 machine. And now I can go ahead and deploy the code over here. Okay, so I'll just go into AWS hyphen live. And now I will uh, first install Python 3. So what I'll have to do is if you can, so I'll be sharing this GitHub with you. I think a lot of people of you might ask this question. Um, so Suresh is saying outside network can connect automatically or we have to do manually. So Suresh, right now I have configured everyone to connect. You don't have to worry, right? And what I'll do is I will just put this uh, GitHub link on the chat so that every one of you can have a look at the code. Okay, so I've done that. And people on YouTube, you can actually just go to this link, which is which you can see over here, and then you'll be able to see the code as well. Okay, now uh, that we have the code with us on our server, uh, yeah, I was going to the README. So according to README, we will have to install all these things. So we have already installed MySQL client. You can find all the commands over here, which have to be executed on your server. Right now, we will have to install Python 3. We'll have to install Flask. We'll have to install PyMySQL, and we'll have to install Boto 3. So what are these commands? So basically, uh, Python 3 is the, uh, you know, is, is the, uh, language that we have coded our website in so this is the language that it has been coded in so we have to ensure that it is existing on the system where we are basically uh, you know running the website flask is a web framework which basically helps python to uh, you know go ahead and uh, publish a website onto that server and pymysql is basically a library which helps uh, you know the website to connect to a MySQL server. Then you have something called as Boto3. So Boto3 are the AWS SDKs uh, that are development kits, which basically help you to connect to uh, you know your S3 service where you will be uploading your files. Okay, so these are the things that need to be installed. So let's go ahead and install it. And for that, what you'll have to do is just go to your server. And first, let's inst uh, install Python 3. So sudo apt get install Python 3. So Python 3 has already been installed. Next thing is that you need to install pip 3. So sudo apt get install pip 3. Pip 3. OK, so it has to be Python 3 hyphen pip. OK. So now it is being installed on this server as well. So it will take some time. Let me see if we have any questions. Okay, no questions so far. Okay, I believe everyone is following along in that case, if there are no questions. Uh, all right, so now let's wait for this installation to get finished. So what we're installing right now is pip. So pip is nothing but a package manager for Python, which helps you install any libraries that your code might need. So it's got, got installed. And now what we can do is install the packages that are required. So pip3 installs by uh, MySQL and we need Boto3. That will automatically be downloaded now for the code. And we also need to install Flask. So pip3 install Flask. 
okay so that also has been installed now uh, what if we try to you know connect to the website uh, the website will get launched successfully but we will get an error let me show you how to solve that error okay so now my website got deployed so now what we were seeing on the local host if you go to the ec2 that we deployed which is this and if i try to go to this ip address you can see on this ip address i am now able to see this website but let me show you a problem that you might get so let me enter my information uh, primary skills let's say it's aws location let's say it's india uh, now we choose a file which we want to upload to s3 uh, let's choose an image which we can basically upload let's click on update database So as you can see, you got uh, an error which says unable to locate credentials. Okay, and if you go to your S3 management console and inside your bucket, that is add employee, uh, you will not see any object or any file uploaded over here. Now how you can solve this particular problem? Now in order to solve this problem, what you'll have to go do is you will have to basically give your ec2 instance or your server access to basically upload data to s3 now how you can give access to your aws instance uh, first of all uh, your question should be why does your server need access to upload data to s3 so uh, on the server we are running some code and that code is trying to interact with the aws s3 service okay now, in terms of when you when you're connecting with RDS, you have passed in a username password. So it all it's all good. It has got the authorization, and now it's uh, able to basically enter information inside the database. But uh, let's now assume that instead of uh, now let's now assume that uh, what is the authentication that we are giving for connecting to our S3 service? So there's no authentication, right? So for giving the authentication to your S3 service, what you have to give is an IAM role to your instance. And how can you do that? So there is a service in AWS, which is called IAM. Just select this service. And in the service now, I'm going to go to users. Not users, sorry, I'm going to go to roles and i am now going to create an admin role for my aws account okay so when i click on create role it will ask me who which service is this uh, role for right so this is uh, a role for my ec2 service so i'll select that okay so once you have selected EC2, next it will ask for permissions. So what kind of permissions do you want your EC2 to get? So when you say permissions, now you're giving access to different services in AWS. Okay. Now for this demo sake, what I do is I just select administrator access. That is this EC2 can actually interact with any service in AWS. Okay. We'll give it admin access. We'll click on next and we'll click on review, review and let's give this role a name let's call it as aws live okay and now let's click on create role so now the role got created and now if i uh, go to my ec2 uh, dashboard now i will have to select my server this is my server Heyman project i will click on actions and now i'll go to instance settings Okay, and in instance settings, I will go to attach or replace IAM role. I'll click there. It's right now is not having any role. Now I'll give it 
a role which is basically AWS Live, which is over here. I'll select it, click on apply, and the EC2 now has the correct role to basically upload data to S3. Now let's see how we can do that. So right now I'm getting this error that is unable to locate credentials. So what I'll do is I'll just try to connect to the website again. Enter the same information. So now let's change the employee ID. Uh, let's enter uh, John Doe. Primary skills AWS. Location, let's say it's India. Image, let's choose an image that we want to upload. This is the image that I want to select. Let's click on update database now. So now me, my image is getting uploaded. And as you can see, it says following image has been added to the database, right? Now, if I go to S3, and if I hit on refresh over here, you can see a file has been added over here. And this is the exact file that I chose, which needed to be uploaded to S3. At the same time, if I uh, try to connect to my MySQL, so let me connect to MySQL from my uh, local host. So let me just check one simple thing, guys. Give me one second. Now let's try to connect to our RDS. So my RDS has this URL. Let me pass this URL. This is the username. Let me pass in the password. Okay, let me use the employee database. And let me select star from employee now. So as you can see, uh, earlier I entered Heman Sharma AWS India, but at that time my image did not get uploaded because the credentials were not there. Uh, this information got inserted. And similarly, my John Doe data has also been inserted successfully. Now let me do uh, one, one thing, guys. I'll just give this IP address to you, and all of you can try entering your information here and this information will then uh, be reflected in my database so i'll just give this ip on the chat on my go to webinar and you can go ahead connect to this website and enter information over there and then you will be able to uh, see your data on the mysql also okay so once you've done that just type in yes in the questions and then i will just go ahead and see, show you guys that your image also has been uploaded to S3 and your data is also being reflected on MySQL. Okay, while you do that, now let's move on to the next step. So this part of my architecture is done. My EC2 is now connected to RDS. My EC2 is now connected to S3. We have our website deployed over here. Now let's see how we can basically route a domain like this to my EC2 server. So right now we are trying to connect using an IP address, right? But I do not want to connect using an IP address. What I want is I should have a domain. I should have a proper domain which can be used to connect to my website. Now, how can I do that? So for doing this, what I'll be doing is I will be going to uh, a service called Route 53 in AWS. So let me just type it out. This is the Route 53 service. OK, so and here we will have to create a, a hosted zone. OK, um, let's create a hosted zone. Click on hosted zone, type in the domain name. Now, this domain name, guys, uh, has to be purchased by you guys. OK, so if you want, you can actually purchase a domain over here, right? It says a .com account is $12. Uh, 
you can just check all the things over here and any domain that you want just enter the name here it will check if it is available or not and you can purchase it straight from the aws management console or for demo purposes what you can also do is you can create a free domain so i have created a free domain from a website called free now so let me show you how that website looks like so just go to freenorm.com uh, sign up yourself over there and then what you can do is you can create your own domain name right all you have to do is once you're signed up signed in click on services click on register a new domain okay so when you click on register on a new domain it will basically just ask you the domain name that you want to uh, you know uh, uh, basically uh, avail for free so let's say i want to avail uh, hello world in telepath let's say this is the domain that i want to select so i'll just click on check availability and if this domain is available it will tell me that it is free and it is available right now i'll just click on get it now it'll say it's selected i'll check out uh again it will be valid only for three months guys remember this if you're buying it for free it will be valid only for three months click on continue and click on complete order once you have agreed to the terms and conditions so now uh, once you get to this order confirmation page it basically tells you that you have bought this domain successfully now go to services click on my domains and you will be able to see your domain over here this is how you basically subscribe to a domain on uh, freenorm now what you'll have to do is is you will have to select aw uh, okay so now i already had a domain which i had uh, followed the same process for right uh, it is exactly the same in the same state i have not configured this domain to do anything i'll be showing you the configuration now okay so i'll be going with ahead with this particular domain aws-project.tk let me click on manage domain and from here in manage domains i will have to go to management tools and i will have to go to name servers once I am on name servers, I'll have to select use custom name servers and then we'll have to fill out this information. I'll show you how to fill out this information in a minute. Let me see if you have any questions. Okay, Nagamani says he has entered some information. Okay, Nagamani, let's check if your information is there. So let me see in the S3 service first. If you have uploaded any files so yes there are some files being reflected over here right and now let me check in my database if i have any values so select star from employee and yes uh, there has been an entry from for the name bhumika and there's also an entry for arjun so I can see two guys have updated their information. Great guys. So you can see your information on the screen now. All right. Moving forward. Uh, now let's go ahead to my, and let me show you now how to enter this information. Okay. So now what I'll be doing is I will be going ahead on my Route 53 management console and I will be creating a hosted zone. So I click on create hosted zone and you have to specify the domain name over here. Now this domain name will exactly be the same as what you have specified in your free norm. So I have my domain name as aws projecttk Okay, we'll be selecting this click on create. And then you will reach this screen on route 53. Now these are your name servers guys that you see over here and these have to be filled out over here in Freenom. Okay, so let's fill these out. So what I'll be doing is let's select these and select these name servers one by one. So let's select, select the first name server, copy it, paste it here. Let's go ahead and select the second name server now. Copy it and paste it here 
select the third name server copy it paste it here similarly the fourth name server which is this so there are in all four name servers that aws gives you and you have to copy all the four in your phenom dashboard okay once done click on change name servers and your changes have been saved successfully now your phenom domain can connect to your route free route 53 service correctly great now you have to connect your route 53 service to your ec2 server that you have deployed let's see how you can do that so now you will have to click on create record set all right specify uh, you know an ip address over here and that ip address will go basically here in the value so let's select our ec2 ip address which is this let's select it and let's paste it in our route 53 so here is the ip address uh, we will not enter anything in this field right and let's click on create so your record has been created similarly create one more record set enter www and enter the ip address same ip address over here and click on create again so you're entering two informations over here one is with www and one is without www okay and you have basically forwarded this to your ec2 uh, instance ip address now if you go ahead and type in aws hyphen project dot tk on your browser it should take you to your website so all of you now you can go ahead and type in this url and you will be going uh, be able to access the website that we have just launched so just go ahead and type in aws hyphen project dot tk on your machine so let me also put it on chat just type in on your browser and you should see this page that is visible over here just confirming the chat guys once all those who are there in the webinar on youtube also guys uh, just type in aws hyphen project dot tk and then you should be able to see the website please confirm us in the chat so that we know that it is working correctly Okay, it is working for Nagamani. Others guys, please try it out. Ramesh says it's not working for him. Okay, Ramesh, uh, just type in uh, www also in front of it. I think it should work out. Okay, so with this guys, we have successfully uh, you know configured a website. Let me also try it in incognito once so that we know this is not something which is being picked up from my cache. So AWS project dot tk and then we'll type in www. Okay, so on YouTube I also see that Jerry King is saying it's working. Great, Jerry King. Thank you for the confirmation. And yes, it is working in incognito as well. Okay, so Madhu says it's working. Uh, Ramesh says working with www. Great guys. Uh, Ramesh, in a, in some time you can also access it on with without www also. Because since it's DNS, sometimes you know the settings, it takes time to be implemented across all the DNS servers which are there, the four DNS servers that we define. Every time each user does not connect to the same name server. Everyone is connected to different name servers based on the load which is there on the server. After some time, even AWS project or TK will work. Okay, so with this guys, we have come to an end uh, to our AWS session, right? So I just showed you today how you can go ahead and deploy your own website end to end on AWS uh, without worrying about uh, you know how you have to uh, deploy a servers, what settings you have to do. So I've showed you each and every step in this video. I have also showed uh, uh, I mean shared the GitHub on the webinar, right? So we can actually go ahead and uh, you know. Pull the code by yourself and try this on your own too.